Hey, all right. Today we got this 2017 Lexus GS350 F Sport, and we are going to do some front brakes. Thing I'm going to add into this video. So, uh, actually, just got done driving it and bedding the brakes. If you don't know what that means, you can Google it. There's a lot of information out there on how to do it. Just basically a series of stops. But uh, before you go about doing any of your brakes on this car, Make sure you turn off the auto park brake, which is down here, if you can see it. The, oh, there it is. So yeah, turn that off and make sure that the parking brake is not engaged before you do your brake job. So if you got in here and you know, you're used to some normal brakes and you saw this weird caliper they got, uh, don't worry, it's just as easy as your normal brakes, maybe even easier. So uh, stay tuned and we'll get to it. So first things first, Get your car supported on a jack stand or a lift if you got one. However you're gonna do it, and we're gonna get this tire off. These are 21 millimeters. So I'm gonna shoot those off and then we'll pick up from there. All right, so the way this works is you have a pin in here and this spring-loaded bracket here that holds everything in place. So what you need to do is you just get yourself a small little punch, a small screwdriver, whatever fits in there, and we're just gonna tap this with a hammer and drive this pin out the back side. Set a camera over here so you can kind of see how it works, but it is super simple, right? It's actually the exact same design that was on the 71 Mercedes I did recently. Uh, now that being said, putting the caliper back in is gonna it's require a little specialty tool, but it's really cheap on Amazon. I'll have a link in the description. I'll also put one up here in the video. But yep, you just pull this pin out, and then this. Hold down bracket will come out with it, just like that. So now, I think by design, these are like those old quick change racing brake pads. I think they're supposed to be able to just come out right now, but maybe not. Um, I'm quite confident when we put the new ones in, that's how we're going to do it. We're going to decompress these calipers. We're going to put this on, and then we're going to slide them through the top and just put everything in. But these ones... Possibly because of all these grooves and the way they're breaking apart, they don't want to come out. So what we're going to do is we're going to move around to the back. we got a 17 millimeter down low and a 17 millimeter up high. We're going to take those two caliper bolts out and then wiggle this whole thing out as a unit. Caliper bolt two. Uh, also, I used a really long ratchet to break them loose. My, don't, don't freak out and think this is the strongest Milwaukee ratchet that's ever existed because it's not. Silly, silly. This side is worn down to literal nothing. Right, and look how tore up these rotors are. If you look at the other side, I've already taken this side apart. Oh, that phone never stops. This side's got tons of meat left. I don't understand how that happens. I wonder if that caliper's locking up and dragging. That's crazy, man. There's nothing in here. Okay, so needless to say, so this is something a lot of people will tell you uh, to check your rotors. And obviously, I'm assuming yours most likely will not look like this. And you just feel them for any lips or ridges. I say turn them every time. So you can't tell if there's a slight imperfection in the wear and it's not perfectly flat. As soon as you do that, you put new pads in. If there's a little bit of a groove there, it's just going to start amplifying it over time. So it's just as easy. Just go ahead and take it up and get them turned. Any of your auto parts stores will do it. A machine shop, it's not that much. Maybe $20 a rotor, I think. So get them turned. That's, that's the best way of going about it. And then start fresh with a nice smooth surface for your new pads. So I'm going to get this thing popped off. The uh, rotors just wiggle off like a normal rotor. There's not even a set screw or anything. So they get a little gummed up on here though, for sure. You just hit the meat, do not hit the studs or the face of the rotor. If you're gonna do this. Bop, bop. Oh, no, how good of a spot that even is. And we'll come back with a little bit of PB blaster. Soak that, 
Give it about a cigarette's time, and then we'll come back and this puppy should pop right free. One eternity later. All right, so we gave the PB Blaster time to do its job. I gave it one more little tamp with the hammer around, and now just work it right off. Wham, bam, thumbs up. So you're gonna wanna get up here before you do any caliper depressing and get up here and pop off the brake cap on this one is just a little rubber cap that pops up, boom, boom, just like that. So we'll set it up there on the cowl. Now, over here. So we need to depress the caliper pistons so that way the new pads can fit in, obviously. So I got a special tool for this. I'm gonna grab it right quick. I have this caliper held with this hand. This is a caliper depressing ratcheting tool, which is really neat. Um, so let me try and hold this. I don't want to drop the cal Oop. Drop the caliper, and I don't want to bang up the heat shield, but see, it just ratchets, and this puppy will depress these calipers. So I'm gonna set this back here. This one from Amazon, which I have linked uh, in the description and somewhere up in the video, this thing fits in here absolutely perfectly for this car. Can't be any better. So now you just ratchet it till these pistons are depressed all the way. stroke but it is depressed depressed it the perfect amount all right we'll bounce that so you look in here now you can see they are perfectly flush and good to go so now i gotta put my little gizmo back together here but simple as that if you don't get it if you catch it before it runs out of stroke you just flip it back this way and then ratchet it hold this part with your fingers while you ratchet the other way and it will loosen and you can pull it out so I'm finally back. We got the turned rotor. Look how nice and smooth that is. It took freaking forever. I mean, it's just like three or four hours later by the time they got that done at the auto parts store. So now I'm in a hurry. So I'm going to show you on this passenger side real quick how you put it all back together. And then I will do the other one without the camera rolling so I can go much faster. But first things first, before you put your rotors back on, you want to get you some red scotch bright. You can get a wire wheel, whatever you want. But you need to clean up this uh mounting surface here so we're just going to go around with this scotch bright is what i like to use but i do we do a lot of body work here so we keep scotch bright on hand you can use a wire wheel if you'd like you could use really anything so it may seem silly that i mentioned putting the rotor back on in the same orientation it was in but lexus actually says that in the repair guide that they want you to mark it with matchsticks before you take it off and put it back on the exact orientation it was in like I said, you can use these little marks here because that's where the holes were. So see that, bam. Uh, that's our rotor position right there. So these bolts, these caliper bolts do not have Loctite on them and they are not torque to yield. So we're gonna slide this caliper back on. That all being said, you wanna make sure you don't twist your line all up, which I may actually have just done, I did, so. There we go. Line is not twisted or kinked. You're going to want to hold your rotor in place while you kind of slide her in there. And we'll get the bolt started. All right, here we go. So no Loctite on them and not torque to yield, but they are torqued to a hundred foot pounds or 135 Newton meters. You do not want to over torque them because they are in an aluminum steering knuckle got it there's the, there's the top one so if you go super duper tight on them then you can damage the steering knuckle because again it is aluminum all right, so I got these fancy schmancy import direct ceramic pads. Look at this box these things come in. Look how fancy that is, dude. So we're going to go ahead and get these dropped in there and put into position. All right, if it looks like we jump size, that's because I'm not 100% sure I mentioned this on the other side. Uh, one, uh, you can also, I didn't do this on the other side, but... I did on this side because it was annoying me. You can run two lug nuts down to hold your rotor in place, kind of, just to make sure it's not all floppy in here. 
while you're, and you're not fighting it while you're doing things. But I wanted to point out that the wear indicators, the little metal clip, is only on one side. That side goes on the inside of the caliper on both sides. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned that before or not. All right, so we got the new pads. They literally just drop right in vertically, nice and easy. So now we're gonna take our new spring that we got here and we are going to tap the rod back through this way. We are through, just like that. <coughs> now, I'm gonna say something. We're gonna take a look here. So, this is the first time I've ever done brakes on this car. But, there should be a hole right here. So I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers, see if I can't spin this pin. So I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to it. But, I think there's supposed to be a cotter pin in here because this should just rotate. See if I can't find a flashlight, but there should be a little tiny cotter pin hole right over there that should have a cotter pin in it that wasn't in either side. So I'm gonna spin it around and see if I can find it. And looky there, what do you know? That is a cotter pin hole right in the pin. So I'm gonna find a small little cotter pin I can put in there before I put this tire back on. But uh, that's very important. So if yours doesn't have that, make sure you get that pin because this can actually work its way out uh, if you're not careful. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that, find me a little cotter pin to put in there. All right, I didn't have any of these on hand to shop so I had to run to O'Reilly's, but I called it a cotter pin. Then I realized I've always called these cotter pins my whole life, just like actual ones. They're actually called hair pins. So this one, fits perfectly up in here. So you wanna make sure you have these on both sides because this is a safety feature to make sure your brakes don't come apart on you. You just push it right in that little hole there. Just like that, clicked in there. Now, just in case it can't work its way out of there. Um, once you've done with that, this is just about ready for the tire. Let me walk you over here. So you just wanna make sure you use some brake cleaner and knock off all the greasy handprints and stuff on your rotors. Uh, that's very important. So we're just gonna douse it down with this, get all this cleaned off, and then uh, it'll be ready for the tire to go back on. All right, here we are, tires on the ground. Uh, don't forget you need to pump your brakes up before you start moving, just because we had depressed all those calipers. Also, don't forget to put your brake fluid reservoir cap back on. So, <laughs> that's this all wrapped up. I'm gonna go shower before I get in here. Don't wanna get Mr. Baca's car all dirty, but hit that thumbs up button if this video hits you out. Uh, I'll have parts, tools, everything you need to do this job in the description through Amazon. If you'd like to order it and wait, that will help us out a bit. And thanks for watching.